Welcome to my YouTube channel, and this channel is called WKISA. And in this video, we'll be taking a look at the subject, N3 Electrical Trade Theory. And for the module, we'll be looking at Alternating Current Circuit Theory. And this module contributes 8% towards the national curriculum. In the case of alternating current, the current reverses its direction at a constant rate. This occurs as a result of the constant reversal of polarity at the output terminals of the power supply. Here we have one coil rotating 360 degrees. As we cut through the, the lines of flux at right angles at 90 degrees and 270 degrees, we produce maximum EMF. Here are a few definitions that we need to know for the sine wave. The maximum value is the value at the highest point on the sine wave. The instantaneous value are smaller values occurring at specific instants on the sine wave. To define frequency, it's the number of cycles completed in one second. The average value is the average value of all the ordinate values taken over half a cycle. And to calculate that, it's 0,637 multiplied by the maximum value. RMS is abbreviated as root mean square, which is the DC equivalent that produces the same amount of heat in the same amount of time. And to calculate that, it is 0,707 multiplied by the maximum value. To define form factor, it is the ratio of RMS to average. And a perfect sine wave would give us a form factor of 1,11. Now, before we attempt the calculation, we first need to understand where we get 57,3 degrees from. Now, to convert radians to degrees, one complete revolution of 360 degrees equates to two pi radians. If we use a little bit of mathematics, 360 divided by two gives us 180 degrees which divided by pi implies that one radian equals 57,3 degrees. A waveform is represented by the equation, and here we have the instantaneous value, which is equal to 250 sine and 314 times time. To determine the maximum current value of this waveform, it is 250 amps. The effective or RMS value of the current is calculated as 0,707 multiplied by the maximum value of 250. And therefore the effective value is 176,75 amps. To calculate the frequency, it is the angular velocity in radians per second, which is equal to two times pi times frequency. Therefore the frequency will be 314 divided by two divided by pi, and this implies that there are 50 cycles completed in one second. Now to calculate the instantaneous value after eight milliseconds. Now we substitute everything into our equation. The instantaneous value is equal to 250, which is our maximum current, multiplied by sine inside the bracket. We can either say two times pi times frequency, or we can substitute the radians of 314 multiplied by 0, 0,008 amps. And then to convert radians to degrees, we multiply by 57,3. Therefore, the instantaneous value after eight milliseconds is 117,733 amps. A self-induced EMF is produced in an inductor whenever the current through it changes. When an alternating current flows through a pure inductor, the value of the current is continually changing and so produces a self-induced EMF at every instant. And self-induced EMF is also known as back EMF for motors or counter EMF. A capacitor is a device for storing electric charge. The charge on the plates is always proportional to the potential difference between them. Thus, as this potential difference varies, current must flow either into or out of the capacitor in order to maintain the correct charge. The greater the rate of change of the potential difference, 
the greater will be the rate of change of current. Here we have a basic RLC series circuit. When we have a circuit that is purely resistive, we find that voltage and current are in phase with each other. If a circuit is mainly inductive, it implies that current is lagging voltage by a certain angle. If a circuit is mainly capacitive, it implies that current is leading voltage by a certain angle. And this would all depend on the power factor. Moving on to three phase AC systems. And here we have three coils placed 120 degrees apart. And as each coil cuts through the lines of flux at right angles at 90 degrees and 270 degrees, maximum EMF is produced. Now, when you have a three phase system connected with a star connection, you'll find that for a three phase motor inside of your terminal box, your stator coils will be bridged horizontally. If we have a look at the current that passes through the line, it is the same current that passes through the phase winding. Therefore, for a star connection, the line current and the phase current are equal to each other. However, the voltage between the line and the neutral, known as phase voltage, is a different size to the line voltage. Therefore, to calculate the line voltage, it is square root 3 times V phase. For a three-phase system connected in delta inside a three-phase motor, for the uh, terminal box of the three-phase motor, the stator windings will be bridged vertically in order to connect the motor in delta. Now, a delta system is also known as a three-wire system. There is no neutral wire or common point. Therefore, the line voltage and the phase voltage are equal to each other. However, the line current splits up at the junction point and the phase current is a different size to the line current. And therefore, to calculate the line current, it is square root three multiplied by the phase current. What are the advantages of three phase systems over single phase systems? Well, the biggest advantage of a three phase system is that it's self starting. Whereas the uh, single phase system, we would need a capacitor in order to start the motor. For a three phase system, there are two operating voltages, more power is delivered. Three phase motors are cheaper. Three phase motors are more efficient and three phase motors are smaller. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button. Thank you.